I just want to talk about how to become a good teenager. It's a test. Are you a good teenager? So this preaching is basically for those who are 13 to 19 years. Those who are between 13 years to 19 years. Are you a good teenager? The Lord just wanted us to evaluate. Are we good teenagers? And we are going to take the life example of Daniel, Meshach, Shadrach, and Abednego. Four teenagers in the Bible character. How did they behave? How did they prove they are teenagers with integrity, teenagers with courage, teenagers with values, teenagers with a spirit of uh, excellence? And what did they do? They transformed a whole nation. If you are a good teenager, the first thing that for a good teenager what you need is you should have a good value system. What are the values that you have in your life? The good values that you have will transform you. We read in the book of prophet Daniel. This is chapter 1 verse 8. Daniel chapter 1 verse 8 we read. Daniel chapter 1 verse 8. We read about Daniel. See, to know the history, Daniel and his friends, they were Hebrew people, brought us captives in the land of Babylon in a foreign country. But we have to know, before they have, they, the Jewish people were being sent to the land of Babylon to slavery. The Lord had already given a warning. We read in the book of, we now first basically we read the book of Baruch chapter 6 from 2 to 7. First we will read what the Lord is expecting from teenagers from 13 to 19. What does the Lord expect when he is sending you to a new nation, to a new country, to a new culture? What does God is expecting from you? This is from the book of Baruch. This is chapter 6 from 2 to 7. Let's read this word of God. That means God is always behind you. God's CCTV is always behind you. An young man, the Lord is telling you. God's eyes are always watching over you. Wherever you are, in any situation, in any nation, in any culture that you are going, God's hand and God's eyes are behind you. And he's telling you, this is from prophet Baruch, chapter 6. This is from verses 2 up to 7. Let me read this. Because of the sins that you have committed before God, you will be taken to Babylon as exiles by Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylonians. That means Daniel and his three friends, Daniel, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, they were being sent, they have been told before that your ancestors will be in this land because of the sins they have committed. So the teenagers have a duty to rectify the mistakes committed by their ancestors through their life of values. Now, we continue to read what the scripture is telling. Therefore, when you have come to Babylon, you will remain there for many years, for a long time, up to seven generations. After that, I will bring you away from there in peace. Now in Babylon, you will see gods. This is from 4, verse 4. Let's together, let's read. Now in Babylon, you will see gods made of silver and gold and wood, which people carry on their shoulders and which... And you should not fear them. We continue verse 5. So beware of becoming at all like the foreigners or of letting fear for these gods possess you. When you see the multitude before and behind them, worshipping them, but say in your heart, it's you, O Lord, whom we must worship. For my angel is with you, and he is watching over your lives. 
my dear children when you are sent to a university when you are sent to a hostel when you are sent to a school your parents have already set certain rules and regulations certain values for you which are these values what is a value a value is god's will about your life which you have put in your heart beforehand the value is a system that you have put inside as god's will for your life it's a value and you cannot set values after you have reached your friends after you have reached your hostel after you have entered the university beforehand you should have set values now this daniel and his three friends had great values they were hebrew people jewish people they were coming from the religion where they worship only one true god the creator of heaven and earth and they have been sent to babylon to another place another country another situation and they already had value system the first thing if you are a good teenager you have good values what are the values of daniel and his friends daniel chapter 1 verse 8 we read before they were sent god had already set them rules even if they were see a, a, idols other gods they should not worship them because angels are behind them watching over them so what did these youngsters do see when they came to a new culture they have tried to change their custom their diet their systems their faith system everything but what did they decide let's read it together but daniel resolved that he would not defile himself with the royal rations of food and wine so he asked the palace master to allow him not to defile himself he decided he had a value what is this value he is a hebrew person he cannot defile himself with any kind of food he has a system he is not a drunkard he is not an alcoholic and he has not decided it after reaching babylon he already had these values in his heart today as you are a teenager the lord is asking you what are your values are you planning to put values after you have reached a situation is not possible decide today before you are put into a situation you should have a value system in your life so that you will be a teenager changing cultures are you think telling that you are affected by the cultures around you are, you have been pressurized by your friends you are the one supposed to change others now for example what what should be if we take the life of daniel and friends what are his values the first thing that he had decided he has decided to hold on to his faith irrespective of any challenge and he had a habit of prayer he had this habit and you as we live in this culture today do you decide as a young teenager can you decide that you will not have sex before marriage do you have a value that you will not get into drugs and alcohol will you decide that you will not cheat in the school will you decide that you will not join the bad company will you decide that you will not be addicted to any kind of games are these your values today i do how because the parents are also listening carefully because when it is it is about somebody else we are very keen when it is about us we and we will be so moody but when it's about children i know parents are so careful i have an exercise for you you are so much uh, insisting your children to do the homework today i have a homework for all the parents can you ask your children a question my dear child what are the top values in your life can you share that with me why these values are important for you can you just tell me my child do you have any values in your life can you tell me what are the values do you give importance to faith do you give importance to prayer do you know that you cannot have sex before marriage do you know you cannot waste your precious time by playing computer games do you know that you should not involve in drugs and alcohol do you know that you should not involve with bad company do you know that you should not cheat in your school in your exams in your test papers you ask your children what are your values may not be just these small little things maybe they may have great values ask them and tell them ask them they are highly reasonable highly intelligent teenagers just ask them why do you think these values are important this is the first thing if you are a good teenager you will have a value 
you will uphold values beforehand you have put it in your heart even when you are put into a company where people all drink alcohol you say no i belong to jesus i believe in jesus i hold on to this value the second thing if you are a good teenager you will have courage you will have courage sisters and brothers this is daniel chapter 3 4 to 6 what is this courage is holding on to his faith this is daniel chapter 3 Four to six. Let's read together. The herald proclaimed aloud, "You are commanded, O peoples, nations, and languages, that when you hear the sound of the horn, pipe, lyre, trigon, harp, drum, and entire musical ensemble, you are to fall down and worship the golden statue that King Nebuchadnezzar has set up. Whoever does not fall down and worship." shall immediately be thrown into the furnace of blazing fire remember they are in a foreign land where king nebuchadnezzar prepared a statue of himself and commanding the people you have to worship this statue fall down and worship if you don't worship you will be thrown into the blazing fire see these children have been threatened to do something that is contrary to their faith that is idol worship that is against their values now they were the children of courage what did they respond this is again daniel chapter 3 17 and 18 these children declared in if our god whom we serve is able to deliver us from the furnace of blazing fire and out of your hand o king let him deliver us verse 18 But if not be it known to you O king that we will not serve your gods and we will not worship the golden statue that you have set up they have decided even if our god is not setting us free we will not change for our own safety and security we will not change our faith we will not worship the idols for us our god is greater than our life and our name our fame our integrity they gave importance with great courage they had the courage to say that sisters and brothers we have another character in 2 maccabees this is chapter 6 verse 30 and these youngsters were been thrown into fire and now one of these young man said to those who are coming to kill him to slaughter him because he refused to worship the idols this is what he responded let's read this together when he was about to die under the blows he groaned aloud and said it is clear to the lord in his holy knowledge that though i might have been saved from death I am enduring terrible sufferings in my body under this beating but in my soul I am glad to suffer these things because I fear him sisters and brothers this is in the book of Maccabees these seven brothers have been tortured terribly because they are holding on to their faith they wanted to put into them pagan worship pagan practices they refused and what did this young man said it is clear to the lord he has great courage he is telling i have a god who can look into my heart and he can see that in my heart i give glory to god see he is telling i am enduring terrible sufferings in my body under his beating but in my soul i am glad to suffer these things because i fear god my dear teenager do you have that courage in spite your friends all your teenage friends are accusing you they are blaming you they are calling you, you are a devotee you are a fool why do you pray are you not intelligent enough are you not believing in science they are asking so many questions they are you are praying rosary and they laugh at you you are using any kind of religious articles and they make fun of you but can you have the courage to stand for the values that you have that you are a believer that you believe in god that's only time you can say that you are a true follower of god again we read in isaiah this is chapter 11 chapter 8 verse 11 8 from 11 we should always know the presence of god 
a, a person with courage how do we get courage for the lord spoke thus to me while his hand was strong upon me and warned me not to walk in the way of these people saying we read verse 12 the lord is telling you should not walk do not call conspiracy all that these people call conspiracy and do not fear what it fears or be in dread verse 13 but the Lord of hosts, him you shall regard as holy. Let him be your fear and let him be your dread. Sisters and brothers, if you are a teenager with strong courage, it is not others who will change you. You will change them with your courage, with the fear of God that you have. This is what the Lord is asking. If you are a good teenager, you will be a person of courage. You will not imitate what others are doing. Again, Leviticus chapter 20 verse 23 we read. Leviticus chapter 20 verse 23. These are all the inspirations of the Lord to the people, the, to the chosen people, to the Israelites, to each and every one of us who are baptized. We read, you shall not follow the practices of the nation that I am driving out before you. Because they did all these things, I abhorred them. Sisters and brothers, let us not imitate children. Let's not imitate what others are doing. Then the third thing, a, a good teenager will have great integrity. Are you a person with great integrity? We read in Daniel chapter 6 verse 4. If you have been checked by others, if you have been checked by your parents, your teachers, do you have that integrity that you can show? For example, even if they look at your phone, if, if your parents, can your parents check all the text messages you have sent? Can they check the computer that you use that they can test the, the browsing history of your YouTube channels? Can they uh, check all the different sites that you have looked do you, can your parents check every relationship, every phone conversation, every test, every social media usages that you have? Then only you can say you are a, a teenager with integrity. Can your parents come to your room at any time and check anything that you use? We read. They have checked Daniel. We read together. So the presidents and the satraps tried to find grounds for complaint against Daniel in connection with the kingdom, but they could find no grounds or complaint or any corruption. Because he was faithful and no negligence or corruption could be found in him. Can the Lord check us and say that you are a faithful teenager, you have no negligence, you are a responsible person, you don't do any corruption. You don't cheat others. You don't lie. Can the Lord make this comment? Can your parents find you faithful, responsible, and integral person? Can your teachers find? If you are a person with integrity, that anybody can check anything that you do, that's the time you can say you are a person of integrity. Now itself you can see, you can look at the Lord and say, Lord, I want to become a person with integrity even if you are pressurized by your friends can you just tell that you know my i believe in god i cannot cheat i cannot do this i cannot watch this filthy thing when your friends are coming and saying you can you have the courage and the integrity to say no this is not good again the fourth aspect if you are a good teenager you will have a spirit of excellence this is the work of the Holy Spirit. We read in Daniel chapter 6 verse 3. Daniel chapter 6 verse 3. Daniel chapter 6 verse 3. Let us read this word of God together. Soon Daniel distinguished himself above all the other presidents and satraps because an excellent spirit was in him. And the king planned to appoint him over the whole kingdom. He had an excellent spirit. From where you get through your prayer, through your life, through your good life, through your prayer life, you will have a spirit of excellence. And what makes you different? We read in the book of, this is Maccabees. This is the book of Maccabees, 1 Maccabees. This is chapter 2 from seven, uh, 17 onwards. This is 
from 19 we read 1 Maccabees 2 from 19 onwards let's read it together but Matthias answered and said in a loud voice even if all the nations that live under the rule of the king obey him and have chosen to obey his commandments every one of them abandoning the religion of their ancestors I and my sons and my brothers will continue to live by the covenant of your ancestors we continue up to 22. Far be it from us to desert the law and the ordinances. Verse 22. We will not obey the king's words by turning aside from our religion to the right turned, or to the left. See, there is an excellent spirit in operation in Matthias, sisters and brothers. Today, the Lord is asking the teenagers, can you have that courage, that integrity, that value to say openly that I belong to Jesus? My eyes I have given to Jesus. My ears I have given to Jesus. My heart belongs to Jesus. I worship the true God and I cannot imitate the things that are not pleasing to God. I belong to God and that's the time you will be you can claim that you are a good teenager when you are being in operation of the Holy Spirit you live a life in the spirit then the fifth aspect to know that you are a good teenager if you have a spiritual discipline if you are a person with a disciplined life we read uh, this example in the book of Daniel again this is chapter 6 from 10 to 11 chapter 6 10 to 11 this is his disciplined life although read together with me although daniel knew that the document had been signed he continued to go to his house which had windows in its upper room open towards jerusalem and to get down on his knees three times a day to pray to his god and praise him just as he had done previously just as he had done previously it was a habit it was a discipline sisters and brothers where he is he's in a foreign land his parents are not after him he's in a foreign land nobody is there to tell him to pray to kneel down and pray but he was praying daily as usual he had a disciplined prayer life a life of faith that's why he was just, the Bible scholars say, Daniel was just 12, between 12 or 15 years of age. A, a teenager. That's why Daniel is such an important character in the Bible. And we read verse 11. Verse 11 we read. The conspirators come and found Daniel praying and seeking mercy before his God. See if somebody is coming to your room. Can they find you kneeling down and praying? Every evil, evil plans will break down, my dear sisters and brothers. Are you afraid of others? That means you are not praying. You are a teenager, you are being afraid of bullying, you are afraid of children back answering you, threatening you, spoiling your name, making complaints. They are asking you to do filthy things. They are asking you to involve in filthy practices. If you are a prayerful man, we read what will happen if you are a prayerful man. Psalm 21 11. Every youngster should by heart this word of God. If they plan evil against you, repeat with me. If they plan evil against you, if they devise mischief, they will not succeed. Once again, if they plan evil against you, if they devise mischief, they will not succeed. If you are a prayerful, if you are a prayerful teenager, the Lord is telling you what will happen. Even if your friends, your youngsters will plan evil against you, it will not succeed. Again, Isaiah chapter 8 verse 10. Isaiah 8 verse 10. You will have the courage to confront the situations, the dual situations. Take counsel together, but it shall be brought to naught. Speak a word, but it will not stand, for God is with us. See, if all your friends are coming against you, plotting against you, laughing at you, making fun of you, making mockery at you, what does the Lord is telling you to a prayerful teenager? Even if they take counsel together, it, sh it shall be brought to naught. Speak a word. Even if they speak anything, it will not stand. Why? God is with you. 
before they were been sent to babylon from jerusalem the lord said my angel is accompanying you not just to watch over you but to protect you to defend you to stand for you no one no force can stand against you again this is isaiah chapter 51 verse 14 isaiah 51 14 every prayerful teenager can claim it the oppressed shall speedily be released they shall not die and go down to the pit no shall they lack bread do you think you are going through an oppression because you are prayerful do you think you are oppressed because you are a religious person you are involved in prayer you are active in charismatic ministry you are in the work of god you do you feel oppressed but the lord is telling you will be speedily released is god's promise again nahum chapter 1 verse 13 prophet nahum chapter 1 verse 13 let's also claim this for all the teenagers the lord is telling and now i will break off his yoke from you and snap the bonds that bind you are you been oppressed by bad friends bad influence and you cannot get out of this the lord is telling you when you pray like daniel day and night every day as usual not when you feel it has become a culture what will happen god will break off his yoke from you and snap the bonds that bind you maybe you are in such an oppression but the lord is promising he will set you free again psalm 3118 you can claim all these scriptures because these are god's promises to a prayerful teenager what he is doing let the lying lips be still that speak insolently against the righteous with pride and contempt you are surrounded by you know when you listen to me you are maybe confused because those friends the those who are with you sometimes they are so wicked they will they will force you to to use the weed they force you to drink alcohol they force you to use the drugs otherwise they will ab- avoid you you will be alone you will be lonely but remember the lord is with you that means an army of heaven is with you what more you need you will have that integrity then what will happen instead of they who change you you will change them remember daniel and these four these four teenagers remember sisters and brothers because of their first their value two because of their integrity three because of their courage four because of an excellent spirit in them five because of their discipline they changed nabukadnesar they changed a nation they changed babylon we read in daniel this is chapter 3 from 95 to 97 do you think you have no influence you are helpless you are useless you are just a teenager if you have god you will be a powerful teenager if you have god with you you will transform a nation see these nebuchadnezzar had already threatened them decided to throw them to the fire decided to kill them but they came to know these teenagers are different god is with them if they oppose these youngsters they are opposing god and now they are converted how we read together nebuchadnezzar said after the fire could not touch these teenagers he said blessed be the god of shadrach meshach and abednego who has sent his angel and delivered his servants who trusted in him they disobeyed the king's command and yielded up their bodies rather than serve and worship any god except their own god we continue Therefore I make a decree any people nation or language that utters blasphemy against the god of Shadrach Meshach and Abednego shall be torn limb from limb and their houses laid in ruins for there is no other god who is able to deliver in this way sisters and brothers a pagan king is declaring there is no other god other than our god seeing the faith and the life and integrity and the value of 
Daniel, Shadrach, Meshach and Abadneko. Can your school be converted through your presence? Can your university be converted through your presence? Can your nation be converted through your presence? Can your culture be transformed through your prayer? If an, a pagan king Nebuchadnezzar who had never heard about God, he treated himself as God. He was a man of extreme pride. If he can be converted through the integrity of for teenagers, teenagers, you have a great responsibility to uplift your God, your creator, your maker. They should know there's a living God through you, through your life. This is what the Lord wants to tell you. And not only that, we read verse 97, they have been promoted. See, the Lord, once God is pleased with you, he will glorify you. He will lift you. Then the king promoted Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego in the province of Babylon. See, they are in a pagan country. They are like refugees, but the, the blessing, the, the respect, the honor the Lord is giving to them in a foreign land. The Lord can do that. Do you think that you are not being respected by your friends? You have no value. It's because you don't uplift your God who gives you value. It's your God who will lift you. It's God who will promote you. Lift this God and he will lift you up. Now, I have a final exercise. I had given an exercise to the parents. Ask your children about, first thing, their value. Second thing, are they courageous? First, value. What are the values that they have? Are they courageous enough to resist evil? And the third thing, do they have integrity? Do they have a spirit of excellence? Do they have a disciplined life? Then they will transform their school, their university, their society, their culture, even the nation. They will become powerful instruments in the hand of the Lord. Make a dialogue with your youngsters, teenagers, and ask them, what are their value systems? And why they give importance to these values is important. Then the youngsters, I have an exercise for you. This is a practical exercise based on the Bible and the Word of God. Now, if I have a question to ask you. If you are playing computer games or video games, is it okay to play video games? You have to find answers for yourself. I will put four questions, four questions before you if you are playing video games. The first thing you have to answer, is me playing video games taking up too much of my time? The first thing, is me playing video games taking up too much of my time? My time for prayer, my time for my parents, my time for my society, my time for my God. Is it taking too much of my time? The time for study, for homework, for reading the Bible? The second question, is this game is hindering me from communicating and interacting with people? God called me to be a people of community. Is this game is hindering me from communicating and interacting with people? The third thing, is this game starting to affect my thought life, my thought pattern? For example, the violence, the sex that you have in these games, will it affect you even when you sit for prayer, even when you sit for studies? Is it tormenting you? Is it dominating your thought pattern? The fourth question, is your conscience convicting you about your video game usage? Is your conscience, is your heart is convicting you? Now, somebody asked, Father, is there anything about the video game in the Bible? Did God say anything? We know that there was no video game when the Bible was written. Now, this is a modern sin. And now, how do we then know the Bible principles? We need to apply the biblical principles to this. That's the way we'll understand. Let's first read this is Ephesians chapter 5 from 15 onwards. 5, 15 to 17. Look carefully and read. This is an exercise for the teenagers. Be careful then how you live, not as unwise people, but as wise making the most of the time because the days are evil. So do not be foolish, but understand what the will of the Lord is. What the will of the Lord is. Somebody told me, 
if somebody is playing the computer games for example they start playing computer games when they are 15 years and they go on until 55 years that means almost 40 years if they have played computer games they say almost in a week they spend 25 hours to play the computer games that means if it is being calculated for 40 years they say almost six entire years in the 40 years of one's life they have spent a total of six complete years in playing computer games and the question is would you be proud enough to stand before Jesus and say Lord I have given I have spent the gift of life you are given to me six years in playing games will you be proud enough to look at Jesus and say Lord you have given me a beautiful life and I spent six whole years in playing computer games will you be ever be proud let's ask this question teenagers will you be proud enough it's very important to ask to ourselves, will it be, is it profiting me? Then the important thing that am I being cut off from my community, my friends, my parents? Do I have time to talk to them? Do I have time to communicate with them? Am I just finding joy in myself? Once you start it, you cannot stop it until you are getting into another level, until you get more points, until you, until, you, until you are not finishing the game, you don't succeed. It's a terrible problem. And again, is this game is affecting your thoughts? Is it affecting your studies, your performance, your exam? You are getting into addiction and it's dangerous. Can you say no to the, this? Then you are an integral person. Then is your conscience is convicting you, sisters and brothers? It's important that we have to read this word of God. Though you will not get this, we are applying this word of God. Romans 14, 23. Read this word of God. And it's very important. This is not just computer games. Watching TV, watching movies, or even playing other kinds of cards or games or any other kinds of things, video games, or any of those things. It is applying. Read this carefully, slowly. But those who have doubts are condemned if they eat because they do not act from faith. For whatever does not proceed from faith is sin. For example, those who have doubts are condemned if they play computer games because they do not act from faith. For whatever does not proceed from faith is sin. So you, you're watching of the TV. You're watching of the movies. Your involvement with the games. Is it proceeding from the act of faith? Whatever does not proceed from faith is a sin. That means eventually it is leading us to sin. That's why is our conscience where God is dwelling. What does the conscience is telling us? Is the conscience is approving you to keep on playing the computer games and waste the precious time for prayer, study and your great future? Let us read this is 1 John 2 and nobody should tell us the Lord will tell you. 1 John 2.27 as you listen to me you will understand as for you, the Lord is telling all the teenagers, the Lord is a God who respects you so much and you, you want your freedom, you need your space and the Lord is telling you, as for you, the anointing that you received from him abides in you and so you do not need anyone to teach you but as his anointing teaches you about all things and is true and is not a lie and just as it has taught you, abide in him is these games are letting you go away from god that you cannot even pray then the lord is speaking to you through your heart again 1 john 3 21 and 22 when you go through these games what does god is telling you he is directly asking you beloved he's calling all the teenagers beloved beloved let's read together beloved if our oh, hearts do not, not condemn us, us, we have boldness before God. See, after playing these games for four, six, seven hours, if your heart is not condemning you, you have boldness. Do you think this is all right? But and you are so much afraid, it's a lot of anxiety, stress, anger, fear. Then we continue. If we have, then, and we receive from Him whatever we ask. Because we obey his commandments 
and do what pleases him sisters and brothers what is the most important thing is to do what pleases god what pleases god a teenager will do a good teenager will do what pleases god are you a good teenager if you are a good teenager the first thing you will have values in your life second thing you will have courage for the sake of god and the third thing you will have great integrity in your life that anybody can check anything that you use your computer your internet your cell phone your parents your teachers your siblings can check every message that you have sent and the fourth thing you will have a spirit of excellence and the fifth aspect you will have great discipline in your life then you will have an evaluation on what you are doing for example if you are addicted to computer games you will have a system you will have an evaluation of what it is doing in your life is it stealing your time is it stealing your relationship with god is it destroying you and if you are a good teenager you will have all these aspects in your life based on the word of god and if you are a good teenager you will not be misguided by your friends you will guide them to god you will never be misguided you will always get out of wrong relationship we read in 1 corinthians this is chapter 15 verse 33 1 corinthians 15 33 do not be deceived the lord is telling all the teenagers do not be deceived together do not be deceived bad company ruins good morals is your morals have been destroyed by the influence of your friends get out of it do you drink because your friends drink Do you smoke because your friends smoke? Do you take drugs because your friends take drugs? You are in a bad company. Get out of it. Again Sirach chapter 11 verse 33 we read. Sirach 11:33. Sirach 11:33. Together beware of scoundrels for they devise evil and they may ruin your reputation forever is your reputation is completely spoiled because of bad wrong company you are not an in, a person with integrity again this is sirach chapter 13 1 and 2 sirach chapter 13 verses 1 and 2 whoever touches speech gets dirty and whoever associates with a proud person becomes like him if your friend has different type of habits it will affect you continue do not lift a weight too heavy for you or associate with one mightier and richer than you how can the clay pot associate with the iron kettle the pot will strike against it and be smashed one day one mother came and she told me father my son is 12 years but his friendship is with uh, those with 19 years 20 years 21 years father i am so afraid he is not making friendship with those in his age so i am afraid whether he will be smashed sisters and brothers who are your friends are they mightier than you are they more influential than, than you and what do they do it can affect you if they dress like certain celebrities if they are addicted to football if they are addicted to cricket if they are addicted to movies if they are addicted to certain games you will also be dragged and you will be destroyed you will spoil yourself read this together with me do not lift a weight too heavy for you or associate with one mightier and richer than you how can the clay pot associate with the iron kettle the pot will strike against it and be smashed you need to make friendship with jesus and make friendship with those whom god wants you not with anyone it will destroy you is your life is so down and low because your friends are always commanding you they are dominating you they are dictating terms to you and you live like a slave you are in captivity the lord wants you to come out of it pray he will give you the grace he has already promised you his promises his help again we read this is in proverbs 22 from 24 and 25 proverbs 22 24 and 25 let's read this important scripture also make no friends with those given to anger and do not associate with hot heads or you may learn their ways and entangle yourself in a snare let's pray heavenly father jesus holy spirit i want you to help me to become a good teenager a young boy who is pleasing you who is after your heart 
Lord Jesus, you know how much I love you. I can say more than Daniel, more than Meshach, Shadrach, Abednego. I love you from the bottom of my heart. Give me that courage, that integrity, that discipline.